All right, good morning. So there was a woman who became very ill, and before you know it, she, she died. And she's up in front of God and St. Peter, and they're going through the list, and they say to her, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry, there's been a mistake. You're not supposed to be dead. Uh, we're sending you back. And she's like, oh, great, good news. Okay, I'm going back. Oh, by the way, how much time do I have? Oh, you've got at least another 40 years. Oh, great, thanks, and boom, she's back. She's back in her body. She recovers from her illness, and, and she decides, you know, I've got another 40 years. I think I'll have a little work done. And by a little work, she meant to complete and utter overhaul. She had everything from the basement to the penthouse completely redone. <laughs> For those of you who are not following, I mean on her, not her house, okay? <laughs> she had it all done because she was going to live another 40 years. And so she goes through these extensive surgeries, and she goes through an extensive recovery period, and she spends a ton of money, and she looks good. She looks really good. In fact, one day she's walking down a street in Beverly Hills, and she glances over and sees her reflection in the window of a store, and she's thinking, girl, got it going on. You know, she's just looking so good, and as she steps off the curb, bam, a truck hits her. She dies instantly and goes to heaven, where again she's in line to see God and St. Peter. And they're going through the paperwork, and she says, excuse me, excuse me, I thought you said I had another 40 years. And they said, what's your name? And she tells them, and they look, and they go, oh, my God, we didn't even recognize you. <laughs> Come on, I like it. I think it's great. So it fits with the song. It fits with the song. So... Um, you know, in the science of mind teaching, Ernest Holmes has um, a, a little bit different take on the idea of ego. <coughs> Excuse me. In, in our culture today, the word ego, when we say somebody has a lot of ego, that's a bad thing, right? It means they're very full of self, right? And not in a good way. They're full of self in that, ooh, it's all about me kind of way. Uh, but Ernest says that, you know, in, in the soul's journey, in, to, to greater spiritual consciousness, the soul starts out with no sense of I am. There's no individuated self. The group does the thinking for the self. So, so my good example of this is, <coughs> excuse me, that when Moses frees the children of Israel from the Egyptian pharaoh, they're a group consciousness. They're a group thinking. They've been enslaved for 650 years. There's no individuated self. Does this make sense? So this is what we do. And they say that about everything. This is what we do. This is what we do. This is what we do. They haven't come to a place where they themselves can make a choice as an individual. So even when Moses goes up on the mountain and he receives the I am, the I am that's given the awareness of God that's given is given for group consciousness. Now, the great thing is that over those 40 years of spiritual journeying, Moses is leading them to the promised land. All right, so that's another way to say that they're starting on their hero's journey. And in the process of making a hero's journey, what happens is that we start to develop an I am, or what Ernest Holmes also calls an ego. Now, I know people hear a lot, and we've heard a lot in recent years about the need to transcend the ego, but you know, you have to have an ego before you can transcend the ego. You have to have a self before you lay yourself down. And so a lot of the work that Science of Mind teaches us is actually how to have a healthy ego, a healthy I am. Because the work that we do when we first come into the science of mind is that we like stabilize the different areas of our life. We get our health together. And I say, you know, I get it. My health is my responsibility. It's my responsibility to take care of my health. And I build a consciousness of health. And I do what I do to maintain my health. And I have that area of my life kind of handled. And it's kind of wonderful. And I say, all right, my finances, my abundance and prosperity is my responsibility. 
and I learn to make an income, and I learn to make a better income, and I say, yes, financial uh, abundance is my responsibility, and I kind of get that area handled. And then you say, okay, well, it's the same thing with loving relationships. Now, I'm not saying that this happens easily. We spend years and years developing the consciousness to cultivate these different areas of life. And it means that we probably take lots of classes and read lots of books and get coaching and counseling and all these things so we learn the skills to become proficient because this is how we build a sense of self. We build a healthy ego, a healthy I am. Now, the problem is, and this is the big thing that I think that, that metaphysics can teach us that is so important, is what our I am, what our ego is tied to. Because if your ego is tied to the world, if your ego is tied to things outside of you, you're in trouble. I'm in trouble. But if your ego is always tied to God, to spirit, to the presence of the living spirit, the love intelligence of the universe, then we have an extraordinary capacity to continue to grow spiritually. So, you know, I like to say that what the human personality always wants is very, very simple. The personality endlessly, endlessly, endlessly wants to be fed, fondled, financed, and famous. It never gets enough. The personality never gets enough of being fed, fondled, financed, and famous, okay? So, so that would be when the ego is... Um, out of control, right? Because, that, because a healthy sense of self has not been developed, right? Because we don't have those areas of our life handled. It's like we're endlessly trying to get. And you know, an interesting thing about that, if your primary message to the universe is, I need to get, you're telling the universe that you don't have. That's your fundamental belief about yourself, is that you don't have. And if your fundamental belief about yourself is, I lack, I don't have, what does the universe give you? More of that. That's what the universe gives you. So you know, after a certain age, and I tell you, it's pretty young. After a certain age, it becomes our responsibility. It, all of it becomes our responsibility. My health becomes my responsibility. My abundance becomes my responsibility. My interpersonal relationships become my responsibility. It, all becomes our responsibility. This is what science of mind teaches us, and I love this because what I take responsibility for, don't hear blame, what I take responsibility for, I can change, I can heal, I can grow in those areas where I say, this is now my responsibility. Mm -hmm. It means that I am a co-creator participant in this area of my life. It's not done to me. All right? that it now is being done through me. All right? And I think that's extraordinary news. I think that's just so, so empowering because if it was being done to us, we would have not a wing or a prayer of really changing it, of making it better for ourselves. And see, this is the impulse to spiritual growth, that God has something better in mind for all of us, that there is always a greater good. The way our beloved Emma Curtis Hopkins, one of our teachers, says it is, she says, there's good for me, and I ought to have it. Don't you think that's so? I do. Like, there's greater good for all of us. And if, and if God intends good for us, shouldn't it be that we have it? Well, yes, absolutely, absolutely. God intends good for each of us. Another way of saying this is that, that spirit within us is always seeking a fuller and greater expression of itself. How God experiences the greater good in the world is by means of us, being open to it, being aware of it, being willing to receive it and express it and experience it fully in our lives. So you know you have to have a self, you have to have a sense of ego in that healthy sense that Ernest Holmes talks about before you can transcend the ego. Well, why would we want to transcend the ego? Well, because, you know, at some point, at some point, there will be a call within each of our souls to go deeper spiritually.